Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of Neurosci IQ. In this episode we will be talking about a new type of brain cells called glutamatergic astrocytes that was discovered by scientists a few weeks ago. So let's get started. On today's agenda we will be talking about different types of brain cells Specifically, we will focus on a brief overview of astrocytes and focus on the new types of brain cells which are called glutamatergic astrocytes and also talk about their significance at the end. So, we have two main broad categories of brain cells. We can divide them into neuron cells and glial cells. Neuron cells are responsible for communicating and glial cells serve more as a support for the neuron cells. Glial cells can be further divided into subcategories such as astrocytes which we'll be focusing on today and we can also divide them into microglia which are basically specialized immune cells and also oligodendrocytes which are responsible for making myelin. It is, res- it is important to know that there are many other types of brain cells, but here are just the three really famous ones. So now j- just to focus on astrocytes. Astrocytes, it, depending on the source and the method that the scientists used, it is estimated that they make up between 20 and 40% of all glial cells. Their dysfunction is linked to many disorders, ALS, Parkinson's disease, and chronic pain, just to name a few and give a few examples. They are also proposed for decades now to play an active role in communication in the brain, similar to neurons, but no one had been able to prove this before now. So as you might have looked at the diagram and see from it, astrocytes are responsible for a wide variety of functions, synaptic plasticity, neuron survival, and also regulation of the blood-brain barrier, and obviously a lot more. So now, just to give a brief summary of the new cells that were discovered, the scientists call them glutamatergic astrocytes and it is actually very interesting how they discovered these cells i will link the paper down below in the description so you guys should check it out it's pretty cool basically what they did was they first compared single cell rna databases from the mouse brain to make clusters and then they identified the presence of cellular machinery so proteins that are required for neurotransmitter release or in other words synaptic proteins that are involved in vesicle exocytosis such as v-glut and also snap25 then finally what they did was they knocked out some of the essential proteins in the glutamatergic astrocytes to study their function and by knocking them out knocking out the proteins they could investigate how these cells might be involved first the scientists discovered the role of these new astrocytes in the hippocampus Specifically, they used the fear conditioning module to test their memory formation. What they discovered was that there was no significant changes to the mouse's learning proficiency. So they would learn to associate the module with the appropriate fear response, similar to the wild type mice. But unfortunately, after 24 hours or after some time had passed, this mouse would no longer associate the module with fear and they would kind of forget all about the module, which indicates that they have trouble storing or processing the memory and that these cells might be somehow involved in memory processing. 
Their second experiment involved studying epileptic seizures and what they discovered was simply the mouse with the knockout model of the glutamatergic astrocytes had more frequent seizures, so more individual episodes of seizure, but also each individual episode of the seizure was actually longer lasting, so worse. So these types of cells might be both involved in processing memory and also epileptic seizures. And the scientists hope that more studies will allow them to understand seizures and memory processing better. And for their last experiment, they actually investigated the effects of these new types of astrocytes on the dopaminergic pathways. Specifically, they focused on the nigrostriatal pathway and the degeneration of this pathway is one of the hallmarks of Parkinson's disease as well as involved in other movement disorders. What happened was that the astrocytes were actually inhibiting excitatory signaling to the dopaminergic neurons and they achieved this by being activators of presynaptic group 3 neurons which are upstream of the nigrostriatal pathway and the astrocytes by activating these group 3 inhibitory neurons were actually inhibiting excitatory dopaminergic neurons and thus affecting nigrostriatal pathway. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Neurosci IQ. If you like this episode, please make sure to like and subscribe for more similar content in the future.